If it wasn't for the rain, I'd be out there on the road. If it wasn't for my bad luck and the love I failed to show, I left here in the springtime. I said I would return, but this hunger keeps me searching. of seniorhood in high school and they claimed they needed me but nah, it was, they did just fine. Let's see. Oh, I think I'll do this. Yeah. Another one of my pandemic songs. You know, those three albums that I finished during the pandemic were inspired by trials and tribulations and of course, I, I grew up um, half Quaker, half Jewish, outside of the, uh, the canyons and bayous and wilderness and swamps of uh, Philadelphia. <laughs> A little town called Jacobtown. And being half Jewish, half Quaker, uh, in other words, Quakish, um, I, I, was, I, I was filled with uh, lots of questions about spirituality, and I hope this song doesn't offend anyone's uh, spiritual um, needs or, or uh, uh, religious uh, affiliation, um, but uh, it wasn't long, I'd say maybe in my 30s, that I'd, I'd seen enough uh, terrible things in this world and really started doubting whether there was a higher power at all, so I converted to Orthodox Agnostic. 
Now, now, Laura, on the other hand, grew up in a deeply religious uh, evangelical family in Indiana. And uh, so she knew of my predilection for requesting the, 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 the meaning of life and the bigger universal questions like where we go when we die and that kind of stuff. So I was out there on the deck one night during the, the heart of the pandemic uh, when we were all shut in, you know, and fearful of what was going to happen next and the world in upheaval and all those many, many people who, who perished. And I was looking up at the stars and I guess I, I might have, have, well, first of all, I should say alcohol was involved. <laughs> but I may have started to pray. And Laura caught me and said, what are you doing? You don't pray. And I said in my best, you know, agnostic fervor, being an orthodox agnostic, I said, I'm hedging my bets. <laughs>
in case you really do exist, I'm just hedging on my bets. I'm hedging on my bets with this agnostic prayer. Even if these words don't get me anywhere, when it comes my time for that great unknown, I'll just hope for the best and I'll pray. I've got this little magic box down here. I, I call it my backup singers, but their real name is the, the Bourbon Tabernacle Choir. <laughs> hey! Pretty cool little gadget. I, I, I use it sparingly enough, I hope, but not too much. I, I, I don't want to overuse it. It's kind of cool. Well, um, It was a, a tragedy in, in Boulder, Colorado um, that affected Laura and I. A, a friend of her daughter's, close friend of her daughter's, was killed in a, in a shooting um, at uh, King Super Supermarket. Um, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a few days later that a good friend of mine, uh, Tay Bronson from uh, Indianapolis, um, sent me this song that he had started writing. And uh, he said, you know, I, I, I think you should sing it. I don't think I should sing it. Tay's got one of these deep baritone voices. And, uh, and uh, a lot of his songs are about uh, drinking beer in the back of pickup trucks and going fishing and stuff like that. And he wrote this really tender, loving song about a kitchen table. Uh, he, he raised a single, single father, raised uh, his daughter, and uh, he was thinking about all the drama in his life that happened with his daughter at that kitchen table. And uh, after Laura moved in with her daughter, I, I, I pretty much knew what that was all about. Um, so he wrote this song called Kitchen Table, and it had two verses, and uh, it was a pretty good song, but after... Um, Losing Denny at the King Supers, um, I and and also in the middle of the pandemic, knowing how many people had perished. Um, when I thought about a kitchen table, I thought about all the families out there that had kitchen tables with an empty chair at it or two. And so I, I said, "Hey, I, I'll, I'll sing it, but um, and record it, um, but I want to add a third verse about an empty chair at the kitchen table. I, I recorded the song and he got to hear the third verse and he was just over the, over the moon about it. And uh, we won uh, an award uh, together at the uh, Rocky Mountain Folks Fest Songwriter Showcase with this song. This is Kitchen Table. Kitchen table. 
dedicate to my ex-wife. Um, actually, to the last words she said to me. My oldest son is getting married this summer, so she'll have another opportunity. But uh, the last words she said to me were, go to hell. And uh, it took me a couple days to come back with something to say, but by then she was gone, and I was uh, there with my twins in Eldora, and, um, and she was in Baja, Mexico, or something like that. Anyway, so by the time I figured out what I really wanted to say to go to hell, um, it, it, it was too late. But what I really wanted to say was, that's where I've already been. You know, and and uh, so I never got that chance, so I put it into a song, obviously. What you said got me thinking That's not a good thing Cause when I get to thinking I'll probably start drinking Think about where I've been And my ships all start Maybe out to the coast Oh, the kids are all gone now I'm feeling that somehow There's nothing left but the ghosts Of a life left behind me And all those exit signs remind me Taking the chances Our circumstances have been hurt It's more about wisdom 
Well, I was at that uh, Red Lodge uh, Songwriting Festival performing, and after my show, a very dapper gentleman came up to me and said, I am, I'm a producer and agent for a very well-known country western star, and I'd like to pay you to write a song for him. And I said, sounds good, how much? And, uh, and what would the royalties be? He said, ah, there's a hitch, there's a hitch. We want you to write a lonesome cowboy song, because this is a country western star. Um, and he never did tell me who, who the star was or the singer. Um, and, but um, he's had trouble writing his own songs lately, so uh, we'll buy the song for, him for uh, a certain amount. And, um, but then we get to claim that he wrote it. And I, I thought, well, all right, you know, and he told me how much money it was. I, sure, I'll do it. Because <laughs> I, I write, I've probably written hundreds of songs. And some of them were really bad, but <laughs> I know some about cowboy. And I, I've got a cousin who uh, manages a ranch uh, near Red Lodge called the Switchback Ranch, she and her husband. And I've spent, the boys and I have spent a lot of time up there pushing cattle around the Forest Service allotments. And I work for the Nature Conservancy in Idaho, and I, I've ridden horseback, and uh, I know I know to I know which end of the horse to stay away from, and and uh, what to do around cattle. And, and all my boys have done rodeo too, and um, so it wasn't you know the cowboy's life is is a tough one and it's lonely. So they wanted a lonely cowboy song. I, I know all about cowboy and I can do I can write a lonely cowboy song. Anyway, they didn't like the song and I get to keep it and claim it for myself. This is Cowboys Get Lost. At the end of the summer when the meadows turn brown and the rabbit brush blooms on the skirts of town the first head of autumn sage tip with frost cattle are returning but our love was lost oh cowboys get lonesome sweethearts do too they'll find a new love that's easy to do hearts can grow Summer is for new love and cutting the hay. We met at the barn dance so joyful in May. Courted through June when all the birds sing. But July for Calhoun means you ride on the swing. And cowboys get lonesome, the sweethearts do too. Yes, 
hearts can go longer when absent or far. Cowboys get lonesome wherever they are. Ah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here tonight. This is just such a joy. I even got asked to come back. <laughs> it'll be it'll be in a year though. But I'll be next year to see us. Thing what two years is not too long to wait to be able to do this. This is this is a real treat for me. <coughs> How's everybody doing? too far to drive home tonight. And the roads are thawed out and all of that stuff. And that the state trooper that I passed on the way here doesn't pull you over. <coughs> or me. Well, I got a couple, just a couple more songs to do for you. This is the saddest song I know. In the old days when you'd go to a brewery, and, and Laura just went to the brewery down the road here and, and uh, bought me a couple of growler cans, you know, to have at the Motel 6 when we get back there in Canyon City tonight. And, and, uh, but, but in the old days, before growlers, if you went to the tavern and you wanted to take out beer, you, you would bring your bucket along. And you'd uh, hopefully not find out that as you were walking back to your house that your bucket had a hole in it. <laughs> well, my bucket's got a hole in it. My bucket's got a hole in it. My bucket's got a hole in it. Can't buy no beer. Yeah, my bucket's got a hole in it. My bucket's got a hole. Just a couple more songs. 
for you before we drift off into the night. And uh, boy, if tomorrow's anything like today was, just beautiful. Um, so, I am so fortunate to have a forgiving and patient partner in Laura. And that is because sometimes I do stupid man things. It's the title track to one of my songs, one of my albums.
just before the dawn when the day remains unsure and just before dawn as the light creeps through our forgiveness and uh, permission, but it doesn't work out that way. <laughs> Stupid man things. All right, well, uh, thank you again so much for coming out tonight. Um, I hope you'll join me in this last song. Uh, I'm sure you'll know, you'll know it. Um, my grandmother... Uh, got off the boat on Ellis Island from Russia, escaped the Bolshevik Revolution to Paris, France, and then uh, got out of France just in time for the Nazis to take it, and uh, came to New York, and uh, she, would, she walked off the boat at 13. So help me sing this. I read good Thank you so much. What a pleasure to play for you.